In this video, I'm going to show how we can use a MIDI controller to control patches on the Zoya, patches that are very complicated and might have different parameters you may want to control, but you can't get to them all quick enough because you're playing your keyboard and you're trying to get to the pedal. By mapping a MIDI controller to selected parameters in the patch, you can very quickly adjust them as you play directly from your controller. So let's take a look. For this demo, I've used the swinging phaser patch from the multi FX kit that uh, Christopher Jack released on uh, patch storage. You can download it there. And what I'm going to do is use my Fader Fox PC4 to actually control some parameters. And in this demo, the um, Micro Freak is just simply playing some some notes. That it's, there's nothing really more to it than that. This is what it would sound like completely dry. Nothing. Uh, that's a, I think a morph preset that came off one of the one of the packs from Arturia. Now we just turn on the standard um, swinging phaser patch. Now there's a couple of things interesting about this. So the first thing you have to do is find what is interesting about the patch, the thing you want to control, the thing that will make it come alive as you play. And for me, this is probably the phaser, which is down here. We have the rate, we have the resonance, uh, the width, and the mix. So for this demo, I'm just going to change the phaser rate. Now what I've done is I've connected via this TRS A to B MIDI cable. It takes the MIDI out from the PC4 fader fox here directly into the MIDI in on the, um, the Zoya. Now the wiring on the fader fox is different from uh, standard like uh, TRS A types. So this is just an A to B cable which I got from retro kits. I'll include a link down the bottom but it will actually just do the direct conversion. Now, what I'm going to do is place a interface module there on the top row because it just happens to have some space. We're going to say MIDI CC in. It's going to come on MIDI channel one. This is currently set to MIDI channel one. And I'm going to set this to controller one because knob one here sends out CC one. So we go back and say done. Now, if I change knob one here, you see the value on the screen is changing. And now I can simply say, right, I'm going to patch that to phaser rate. And now when I look at phaser rate, it changes as I dial the knob. You can bias the, the, the lowest value, so the lowest value can be dialed down to zero, or you can set it to some midpoint. Let's do the same thing with the phaser resonance. Again, we're going to put a MIDI CC in interface there. This time we're going to set it to controller two. Two, yep. Click done. And we are going to patch that to resonance. So now we've patched the rate and the resonance to MIDI uh, one and two knobs. Let's go and do one more thing. I also like the look of this LFO here because this is what is controlling the panning effect that you're getting as well in this patch. Pans from left and right channel. Now let's control the rate of this uh, LFO by putting another. MIDI control CC in, and this will be controller three. There we go. Yep, three. And we patch that to there. And now when we look at it, we can control the rate of the panning to from extremely quick, almost up into audio rates, all the way down to nice and slow. And again, you can just bias it to a point that makes sense for the lowest point on the dial here. And finally, I put a, a reverb, a, just, a, just a room reverb to add something interesting into this. So let's play around with the delay time for the reverb here. And I'm going to put an interface module there, and that will be number four. One, two, three, four. There we go. And that is the delay time. And then we'll put the reverb mix. We're going to put another one. And we'll make that be controller number one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And there's reverb mix to there. So uh, we can easily just have that bias down to pretty much nothing. So when knob five is there, then we can dial up and down the reverb mix. And we can do the same with our reverb decay time, set the lowest thing to be just pretty much say half a second, if not even. So when this knob is at zero, it's pretty much dialed off, and then we can dial the delay all the way up here to, well, infinite, which would which would be kind of fun. Now let's actually give this a go. So first of all, we'll just... Now we're playing it, so we're gonna start dialing up the phasing rate. 
be like phasing away there very quick in the background. You can play with the resonance. Way too fast. You know, that kind of got out of control there. I'm dialing up the left right panning LFO. Now let's start dialing up the room reverb. You can see things can get very quickly out of hand, but the general idea here is now you have a complicated patch that has multiple parameters that you can map out to these MIDI controls and very quickly start playing around with it. I've done this in a number of my other videos as well, where the Zoya is running looping patches or resonating multi-top patches, which have a lot of controls to them. And if you tweak all of them, you can really play the patch as an instrument in addition to the sound from your uh, your synth or whatever you're putting into it, your drum machine. But to do that, you really need to be able to connect a MIDI controller to it. Hope you found that useful. Please hit like and subscribe and uh, stay in touch for further videos.